Tina Cooks is made possible through the generous support of E.T. Cody and Sons Auto Parts, Lemonster, Papa John's Pizza, Lemonster and Fitchburg, KC's Body Connection Massage Center, connecting body, mind, and spirit. Boucher Construction, Central Mass Sand and Gravel. Hi, welcome to Tina Cooks. Tonight we're going to do a meatloaf and macaroni and cheese. I'm going to start out with some nice fresh hamburger that I got at Central Meat Delis on Central Street in Lemonster. Nice little deli, they grind it fresh. Good, good, good. We're going to do some breadcrumbs. Now, I'm saying about a cup, a cup of breadcrumbs. This is two pounds of hamburger, two pounds. I'm gonna put about a cup of meat, a uh, cup of breadcrumbs in here, like so. And I'm gonna put about three quarters of a cup to a cup of che uh, grated Romano cheese, okay. I'm also gonna add four eggs that I cracked here. There we go, four eggs. Alrighty. I'm gonna put in some onion, a little bit of onion, because everybody in my family doesn't like onions. <laughs> they don't realize how much they eat onions, but they do. And we're just gonna cut them real fine, get rid of that hamburger piece. Okay, wait, my board's sliding, not good. Watch your fingers, remember to keep them curled under. Okay, put those in here. So that's about maybe a little over a half a cup of onions, half an onion. I'm gonna take a few slices of pepperoni. Okay, let's see, two, four, six. Yeah, we'll go at like seven or eight pieces of pepperoni. I'm gonna cut this up. This is gonna make your meatloaf taste nice and Italian. Okay, put this in there. It's easier to pick up the cutting board. And what good is it without any mozzarella? You gotta have some shredded mozzarella in there. If I can open this bag, my hands are wet. I would say about three quarters of a cup, like so. Now we need to season. I'm gonna season our meatloaf. And I am going to put some granulated garlic. I would go with at least two teaspoons. And I'm gonna say about a tablespoon of salt. I'm gonna add some parsley, and I would say that's about a tablespoon or two. One more. And some fresh ground pepper. And yes, Frank, I'm going to use some milk. Get a lot of comments about my milk and my meatballs and not poking the sausage when I make sauce. That's okay, because this is my cooking show. <laughs> and we're gonna just mix this up real good. Now, if it's a little too moist, which I think this is, I'm probably going to add a little bit more breadcrumbs. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of mushy. So I'm going to rinse my hands real quick because I don't want to get eggs all over my um, stuff. It's just gross. 
So we're gonna just put a tish more breadcrumbs in here. Not too, too much. Like about that. Okay. That's good. And there we go. Now I tend to smell my hamburger because you don't want to taste it at this point. If you want to check it and make sure it's seasoned enough, you could take a little chunk and fry it like I did the meatballs, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shape this thing. And I'm gonna shape it right in here. Okay. Oh, wait, I forgot one thing, Carl. It's very, very important. I have to spray my pan with Pam because if I don't, that's gonna stick to the bottom. And I forgot about that. We don't want a stuck meatloaf. That'll be bad. So we're gonna spray this down real good. And we don't have no stickage. Okay. Now we're gonna take our meatloaf and put it in. Now two pounds, as you can see, makes quite a big meatloaf. But the reason why I made this so big is because I'm gonna put hard boiled eggs in half. Now when we were younger, my mother always put hard boiled eggs in our meatloaf. I think it's an Italian thing, I don't know. And um, of course I can't open the container because my, my hands are all meat, meatloaf. There we go. So I'm gonna put two eggs down here like this. And then you kinda cover them up fix them up like that. And this, oh, this half, I almost lost my eggs. <laughs> this half, Andy's over there laughing. This half we're gonna leave plain. Now also on my egg side, sticking with the Italian thing, just keep like whacking down a little bit, get the air bubbles out of the meatloaf so there's no pockets. Okay, there we go. Now right here I've got some prosciutto. Usually my mother used to use bacon. She used to put bacon on the top of hers. You can put tomato sauce. I know some people that use ketchup on meatloaf, but they, everybody's got their own taste, you know? Then I'm gonna take this prosciutto and I'm gonna wrap it right around this meatloaf, just like I would a bacon, like if it was bacon. This is gonna be one heck of a meatloaf, I'll tell you. Okay, so I'm gonna curl this under a little bit, just in case. And there we go. Now, I'm gonna put this in about 350 degree oven. This is gonna take a good two hours. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover it with tin foil and bake it at 350 for about an hour. Then I'm gonna take the aluminum foil off so that it can get nice and brown on the top. So let me cover this with tin foil. Okay. Let's put this in the oven at 350 degrees. Okay, and we'll be back to stock the macaroni and cheese. Okay, I'm gonna get my cheese ready for my cheese sauce for my baked macaroni and cheese. And I do like a nice, fresh cheese sauce. I use aru, which is with butter and flour. This is a New York cheddar orange and I'm gonna grate the whole block. I threw the paper away so I'm not sure how much it is. But here's the paper and it is about 74 so that's a pound. Well that's actually more than a pound because I'm trying to think. Well it's 74 ounces so it's almost a pound. So we're just...
getting there. I could use one of my machines, but this is really soft. And I think that you lose most of the cheese in the machine when it's squeezing through. So I tend to just grate it, it's easier. Now when I get down to this little chunk like this, I'm just gonna cut it up. I'm not gonna shred it all, because it'll have time to melt, okay? So now I'm just gonna cut the rest of this up into small little pieces, and that'll melt. Then I'm gonna taste this piece. Oh yeah, it's good, very good. Now, I'm gonna add two slices of American cheese, because I have it in the refrigerator. I like to add a few different cheeses so that it's got, you know, a cheesy flavor. I'm gonna throw this in. And then I'm gonna throw in two pieces of provolone, give it a little bit of spunk. There we go. Put that in. Now I'm gonna put in a piece or two of Swiss cheese. I like a cheese and baked macaroni and cheese. Okay. And there we go. And also, I'm gonna throw in about a half a cup or so of Romano cheese right on the top there. And this is my cheese for my cheese sauce. So we're gonna move it over to the stove and we're gonna do the cheese sauce. Alrighty, I'm melting my butter for my cheese sauce. Okay, I have about two and a half tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of flour. Now this is called a roux, okay? A roux is a thickening, um, it thickens sauces and gravies. It's a thickener. I'm gonna let that melt in there. I'm gonna add some salt in the bottom here. And I'm gonna add some pepper. I season my roux. Okay. Now you have to wait till this is melted. You don't wanna cook it, you don't want it to get brown. That's not something you want to happen. Okay. Can you see it, Kyle? All right. I'm gonna start out with a quart of skin milk. Yes, I use skin milk in my cheese sauce. Oops, I spilled some, so we might have to add a little more after. But I'm gonna start out with a quart, and then I'll add my cheese as soon as I whisk in my roux, because I want my roux to be whisked in, and that will thicken as the cheese melts. Okay, see a pepper in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take the cheese and put it right in the milk, just like so. All my flavors, all my cheesy, cheesy, cheesy cheese sauce. Was that enough times, Lucia? <laughs> Lucia and Gina are counting how many times I say cheese. Okay. We're just gonna whip this in like this. I do keep a whisk in here while the cheese is melting. You wanna keep this on a low heat. I'm gonna put it down to about two and a half. Okay, maybe two. You don't want it to boil. Cause if it boils, it's gonna curdle. Gross. We don't want curdled cheese sauce. Okay, so we're gonna let this go. And we'll be back in a few minutes when it's all melted because this will take a little bit of time because like I said, you want to melt it nice and slow. If you've never done this before, stay with the pan. If you have, you know whether you can leave or not. And we'll be back. Okay, so now you can look in the cheese sauce. The cheese is all starting to melt in. It just hasn't started to thicken yet because the milk has to get hot enough to thicken. I am gonna put in some nice parsley so that we have a little bit of green in there. I love green, I love parsley. 
makes the macaroni and cheese look good. Okay. And then we're just going to let our cheese sauce thicken up. I'm just going to keep stirring until it starts to thicken. Now that the cheese is broken down, I will switch from a whisk to a spoon. Or this little flat, little flat thing because it gets the bottom nice. And there we'll go. We'll just let it thicken up. All right, we're going to check the meatloaf. I said an hour into the cooking, we're going to take the aluminum off, okay? And see how it's progressing. Ooh, I'll tell you one thing, it's hot. Oh yeah, it's coming out nice. And see, we have some juice in the pan stopping, which is good, because we are going to make a gravy. It's not quite ready though yet. It's got to get a little more golden brown. All right, we're going to put this back in the oven. And we're going to pull the cheese sauce over here. And we're going to start the macaroni and cheese. Okay, now this cheese sauce is nice and loose. It's not up to its full thickening potential yet. Because when you bake it in the casserole with the pasta, it'll thicken a little more. It'll get thicker. And it absorbs into the pasta. So you don't want it real, real thick at first, okay? So this is what we're going to do next. I'm going to take a pot holder because I would much rather have this on a pot holder. All right. We're going to toss that into the sink. I'm going to get my Pam. Then I'm going to spray my casserole dish with Pam. Just like that. I'm going to take my macaroni and I'm going to put a layer of it in here. Now, you don't want to, these are mini penne's. I'm not going to add them all because I want to be able to have enough sauce so that it doesn't get all absorbed and it's dry. We're going to take our cheese sauce and we're going to pour it right over the top like this. Okay, and there we go. Now this looks really moist and wet, but when it finishes cooking in, you're going to see that it's not because the pasta is cooked al dente, which means it's got a little more way to go. I don't cook it all the way, so that it does have a little more to absorb, okay? Now right here I have some breadcrumbs, and of course I ran out of breadcrumbs, so I put a little bit of crackers in here, which is just as good, and I'm gonna use a little bit of olive oil, and I'm gonna use some salt and some pepper and I'm going to save this for last. I am going to grab some Romano. Forgot it. Be right back. Because I like to have seasoned breadcrumbs. If you don't season your breadcrumbs, they're going to be shaba. They're going to be flat. And you don't want that. We want a little bit of parsley too for color. because I like to season all the components of my food going in. And we're gonna just mix this around. And what the oil does is it stops the breadcrumbs from, I don't know, it makes them crispier and it, they don't get so dry and, I don't know, it's, 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 it helps the breadcrumbs stay nice. We're gonna sprinkle them on the top. Like so. I don't put a real heavy coating, but I like a little bit, you know, to coat it so that it's all nice and covered, makes it nice and crunchy. Okay. And then we're going to put on a little bit of paprika because Kyle likes paprika on his baked macaroni and cheese because that's how his mother made it. So I try to stick to some of her traditions. <laughs> Not many. <laughs> there are a few I do. Okay. Now this is our baked macaroni and cheese. I'm not gonna add these because I don't need them in here. I'm gonna keep them separate. You can always pass, uh, toss them with spinach al oil or broccoli and cauliflower al oil with some cheese. They'll be delicious that way. Pasta never goes to waste in this house. Okay, so we have the meatloaf in there and I'm going to take the baked macaroni and cheese 
and I'm going to put it in the oven. This only needs to cook for 45 minutes. The meatloaf has another hour. So in 15 minutes, I'm going to pop this in. We're going to bake it up till it's nice and golden brown. And we'll be back when everything's all set and we're ready to serve. I'm making my gravy and I have, I have gas, gas stove. Well, we just had excitement. Kyle missed it, of course, he wasn't fast enough on the camera. I went to wipe my stove off and, oops, I got debris flying in my hair. I, my towel was on fire <laughs> while I was making my gravy. Thank God I smelled it because I almost burnt my coolie off, <laughs> literally. So be careful with the gas stove because you don't want to go burning your coolie off. Okay, so we have our juices from our um, meatloaf and I'm gonna season it up a little bit, and let it simmer down. I'm gonna strain it because it's got a lot of the um, fat and stuff from the meat, which I don't wanna leave in there. Kyle, I just gotta grab my salt, so, I mean my pepper, so watch out, I don't wanna clock you. Okay, pepper. Now I just used some beef stock to give me enough for, gra for a gravy for the meatloaf. This is how our meatloaf looks right here. I've got the prosciutto side with the eggs and then the plain meatloaf, okay? So I'm still upset over almost burning my coolie off. I'm telling you, man, that I felt that heat behind me. I'm saying, wait, that's, that heat ain't coming from the right place. Okay, just gonna add a tish more. This is just a slur, what they call a slurry, a flour and water slurry. So that's basically what it is. And we're gonna let this simmer up. And we're gonna be plating up now. Okay, we're gonna finish up this meatloaf show. I'm gonna cut into the meatloaf. This is the one with the prosciutto and eggs. And I wanna cut it in half so you can see the eggs. I'm gonna come over here, Kyle. I know it's close, but I'm gonna take two slices out of here. See how the prosciutto is nice and crispy? Ooh, that's gonna be so delicious. Oh, maybe the, did I do this backwards? The eggs over here, yep. Well, I did it a little bit backwards, but that's okay. Here's the eggs. Okay. Excellent. And here's the baked macaroni and cheese, which came out nice and crispy. And it's not real um, thick. It's, it's got, you know, some nice cheesy sauce to it. Great. Serving this up like so. And of course, I'm gonna bring this over here because I made some gravy. And we gotta have some nice, delicious gravy with it, which is going to be wonderful. Let's put it right over there like this. Just a little drizzle on the macaroni and cheese. Gives it that little extra special taste. Okay, so here we go. Meatloaf, macaroni and cheese go along with any of the side dishes we did in our previous show. Thank you for watching Tina Cooks. Have a good night. <laughs>